Guys, in my last video, I made some pretty outlandish claims about having the world's most powerful LS engine built with Hemi heads. And I'll tell you, the best thing about making videos for YouTubes is the comments, the complaints, the hate mail, all that stuff. And everybody said, well, that's not a real LS engine because it used a Hemi head. So you know what? I got something for us to talk about today. What actually makes an LS an LS? All right, well, I think the first thing that we kind of have to determine is what exactly makes an engine that engine family. And so let's take a look at our bottom end here. Let's talk about the, the short block, if you will. So this is a dart, like a production aluminum LS next block. So that means anybody can call up and buy the same block. It's not a custom built uh, one, of, one of a kind billet thing. It uses all the standard dimensions. The deck height is like 9235, 9240. That's normal LS stuff. It uses the standard 4400 bore spacing. It uses the standard fasteners for the you know head studs and main studs and all that. Speaking about main studs, it uses standard crankshaft journal sizes, 2558. It's not even oversized there. You can put a factory stock oil pump on this block. You can run a factory stock oil pump, a pan on this block. You could put a dry sump. You could put an external pump with a wet sump. Basically, everything you could do with a normal LS, you could do with this engine. So if that's all LS stuff, then really the reason people are saying it's not an LS must have something to do with the cylinder head. So I tell you what, let's go in the back and let's look at a bunch of different cylinder heads and see if we can figure it out. All right, so since we've kind of established that it must not be the block or the lower end or the crankshaft dimensions that are making an LS an LS, that means it must be the top end. So tell you what, I got a couple different cylinder heads of all different shapes and sizes and flavors here. Let's take a look at them. I want to start with this one. This head's kind of special to me. I don't use it for much anymore, but this was the original LS7 based spinal tap engine. If you're not familiar with that, it was kind of the first engine LS-based engine that we ever took over 11,000 RPM, and it ran pretty good. It was 358 cubic inches, naturally aspirated, it made about 920 something horsepower. But of course that wasn't good enough for everybody either, and they said, oh well, that's stupid. Why would you do that? It doesn't make enough power. So we got something for that coming up here in a minute I'll talk to you about. But before we get into that stuff, this original spinal tap cylinder head was pretty much a aftermarket LS7 casting. And what I mean by that is all the valves are in line, they're in a straight line here. It uses a wedge style combustion chamber, just like a factory LS would. It uses the factory valve angles. Um, you know, obviously it's got oversized valves. So apparently I can put oversized valves in and it's still an LS, but I'm not sure exactly when it stops being an LS. So take the Hemi, for example, on the dyno. The biggest difference between a Hemi and a wedge combustion chamber is the location of these valves. So for example, notice how these are side by side. The intake port's over here and the exhaust port's over here. So my air's got to come in, make a turn, go out, come out. Well, the difference on the Hemi is everything is rotated pretty much like 90 degrees. So my intake valve's over here and straight across from it over here is that exhaust valve. And the shape of the chamber is more like a hemisphere, like a half a circle, if you will. And so it's that straight across airflow that really helps those Hemis at high RPM, especially during the overlap period where it's easier to get things moving and, and in and out of the engine. So that Hemi does have a big advantage at high RPM. It's not perfect everywhere. The valve train stability can be an issue with them and things like that. But for the most part, it doesn't look anything at all like this. So if putting the Hemi head on my LS lower end makes it no longer an LS, what exactly does that make it? Because that Hemi cylinder head it's not a Dodge, it's not a Chrysler. It was actually originally designed by um, Greg Brown at Hammerhead Hemi to be a small block Ford. So is it a Ford or is it a Chrysler? And is it really just the shape of the combustion chamber that determines what kind of engine it is? LS, Chevy, Ford, Chrysler? I don't know. I'm interested in what you guys have to say, but I'll tell you what, what I wanna do is I wanna move over here and take a look at the next generation of LS heads. Um, not LS heads really, it's, it's actually what's called a CID SC2. It's kind of modeled after the, after the uh, Edelbrock SC1, which was a Ford head. This is the Spinal Tap 2.0. And goodness, this thing's heavy. There's a lot of casting here. But um, a couple things I want you to notice. I'm going to put these right next to each other, first of all. And I want you to notice the orientation of the valve. So I've got both the exhaust ports here. The intake ports are down, but notice starting from the end of my head on the, S, on the uh, LSCR heads, the valve locations are reversed. Over here on my normal LS, it goes intake, exhaust, intake, exhaust, intake, exhaust, intake, exhaust. On this one, 
the valves are flipped, and that has a lot to do with the approach angles in the port, the valve train stability in terms of pushrod angle and all that kind of stuff, but it offers a big advantage to performance and airflow. And also these valve angles are changed and they're also what we call canted. So where these valves open in a straight line, straight up and down parallel to the cylinder bore, these ones are cant it over a little bit. So when this valve opens, it opens towards the center of the bore. That means the edge of the valve is getting farther away from the cylinder wall, which really helps with airflow. The other thing I want you to notice is the rotation of these valves. So again, on a normal LS engine, all the valves are in a straight line. The center lines, you could lay a ruler down there and they line up. So here, you can see that's what's happened is we've rotated those valves so that my exhaust valve is dropped down lower by the port. So if this is an LSCR head that was originally based on an Edelbrock Ford head, if I put this on my engine, is it still an LS? And if it is still an LS, how come? Is it just the amount of valve rotation? Because I can rotate it this far and it's still an LS, but if I go all the way over at a Hemi, oh, that's it, it's not an LS anymore. So it just kind of makes me wonder, you know, what if, what if I was to take a non-LS head and Put it on LS. What if I took this small block Ford D3 casting? Doesn't belong anywhere near a Chevy engine, but you know what? I could fool around and make some adapters. I could move the bolt hole locations because the, the bore centers of a Ford are different than a Chevy, but with enough creativity and a doggone Bridgeport mill, I bet you I could figure out a way to get this to fit on there. Then what would I have? Same thing, I've got this rotated valve arrangement. So if I took a small block Ford engine that had originally got inline valves and I put this rotated valve D3 on there, everybody agrees it's still a Ford. So when does a Ford not become a Ford? What about a big block Chevy? Let's take a look at this guy. So this is a Brodix aftermarket big block Chevy SR20 head, okay? So the valve angles are different. Being a 20 degree valve angle will shoot. A normal big block's got something like 23 or 24 degrees. So when does that stop becoming a big block? A lot of common things that happen in say truck pull engines, they'll put Hemi Chevy cylinder heads on a big block. And you know what everybody calls those? They call them big block Chevys. So why is it that there's so much hatred over the LS engine that people can't stand it when one runs good? So we gotta do everything we can to make sure that, oh, that's not an LS. I think about my buddy, uh, Steve Morris makes the SML. Well, now that's actually a different bottom end. If you think about it, his block is beautiful. Wonderful piece of engineering. I'm not saying anything negative about it. I actually think it's pretty cool, um, but it can only use a dry sump, right? Um, you can't use any head on that block other than the SML head. That head only fits that block. It does not fit a normal LS block. You can't put any regular LS heads on an SML. They're different engines, but it's an um, SML. So is that really an LS or is it just LS based? I think about um, Noonan, right? And they're famous for their 4.9 Hemis and all the amazing stuff that they make. And they make a LS product that's also the same way. You can get it with a solid block. There's no water in it. Is that an LS? Um, let's see, I could put Cleveland mains in my Dart LS next block. So now I've got a Ford main bearing size in an LS engine. Does that make it an LS? At the end of the day, I don't really care which engine family we're talking about. There must be something we can all agree on and what makes it a Ford, what makes it a Chevy, what makes it a big block, a small block. What makes it an LS? So there's a number of other things to consider. I mean, to be fair, at the end of the day, I can't think of a single part anywhere on this engine that actually came from Chevy or GM. So when we start talking about, is it an LS, is it not LS? And we got our block here. This is an aftermarket Dart block. So does that make it a Dart engine now and not an LS engine? What about things we modify? For example, this has a raised cam location. That's not stock LS. It's 60 millimeter bearing journals. That's not stock LS. What about lifters? Does it have to be an 842 lifter in a plastic tray to be an LS? Or if I put a solid lifter in it, does that still count? What if I get rid of the solid tie bar lifters and put in a Jessel Keyway 937 lifter with an 850 wheel? Does that make it not an LS? What exactly in this engine determines what it is? At the end of the day, I like them all. I think about the SML and the Noonan and I think about all the different stuff out there. And you know what I think? I think they're all cool and I think they're all LS's. What I really want to know is, what do you think?